do I want to uh, gain all this money uh, happy or being miserable? What do I want in my life? You know, I want to make the money, but in the same time, I want to be happy. Welcome to the Sales Problem Podcast. Here is the problem we are trying to solve. Every year you hit the reset button and you have to beat your numbers and grow your business. You have to get quicker, faster, and better. We are two guys trying to solve that sales problem, trying to help you grow by enhancing what you know about the art and science of selling and personal development. Along the way, we're going to interview some interesting characters and debate some different angles about this common business problem. So thanks for joining us. Let's get growing. Welcome back to the Sales Problem Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Burns, and joining me is my fast and furious co-host, Steve Comerford. How you doing, Steve? I'm all right, Dan. Which which fast and furious character would I be? I don't know if it's Vin Diesel or... I don't know. I don't I'd know. Who lose, do you think? I'd have to lose the hair, maybe. That, and I, 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 can't, I can't go there. But happy to, happy to be here with you, Dan. Really excited about it today. Is is uh, is giddy up a little too early in the conversation? Should we wait for, for wait for later for this star guest we have? I think you can throw it in there. And if you're going to shave your head, I hope you do it on the podcast, Steve. So <laughs> today, once again, we are solving the sales problem. So let's start talking answers. We're going to roll into another interview with an incredible high performer this week. His name is Eurico Rosa da Silva, and he's a former professional jockey who retired from thoroughbred racing in December of 2019. But over the course of his career, he set records around the world and accumulated, listen to this, over 2,900 career wins, including back-to-back -back wins of the Queen's Plate in 2009 and 2010. He had lifetime earnings of over $120 million and became a seven-time winner of the Sovereign Awards as Canada's Outstanding Jockey. His story began in Brazil, where he was born into a life of poverty and struggled with a debilitating illness. Despite that beginning, he planned to beat the odds he was faced with and spent his life traveling the world, becoming one of the best in his field and now mentors others to do the same. And as a public speaker and coach, he works to connect with people by sharing his journey. His aim is to provide inspiration and to help, help share techniques that he used to achieve success in his professional and personal life and to inspire hope. And to tell you that regardless of where your life begins, it is what you do with it that matters. And he also has published a book in 2020 titled Riding for Freedom. So we are so excited to welcome Eurico Rosa da Silva to the podcast. Eurico, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty, pretty good today. I'm telling you, I just came back from Turks and Caicos. I arrived last night and I'm feeling fantastic. And I want to take also this first opportunity here to say that I'm so grateful to be here today speaking with you, uh, with you, Daniel and Steve. Well, there is so much that you're going to share with our listeners. You know, one of the things that we try to do is bring on high performers that have a lot to contribute. So I think we're going to get a lot in this episode. You are certainly in that upper echelon of high performers in your field. I don't know a lot about horse racing, so I'm super excited to extract all the things that uh, that you bring and give it to our listeners. Why don't we start with a overview of your book, Riding for Freedom, and tell our listeners how you became such a high-performance individual. Um, my book, uh, I talk about, um, um, you know, the, 
the uh, kind of uh, the work I did to become a high performance, how much I want to be high performance. Um, I talk a lot about in my book, also in as much I'm going so well in my professional, uh, but also I was struggle a lot on my personal life. You know, I was one person, happy person in my job. And then I was struggling my personal life with a sex addiction, addiction. And, um, and, and also, um, uh, sometime when we, we are addicted to something, um, uh, we get very confused in our, uh, our mind and thinking that we are a bad person, you know, but then you start, uh, I start working with, um, very good psychology. I worked for a long time, for eight years, and I started to understand where this urgent was coming from um, and how I became free from this. Wow. that That's an amazing story. And, and I think for our podcast, one of the things we talk about is sales people. And there's two divisions to that. There's the sales and then there's the people. So that balance between the professional life as a salesperson, but then you've got that other side of your personality as well. When you go home, you know, when you're not on the job, the person that you are. And so many of us deal with all kinds of different addictions, whether it's a sex addiction or, or alcohol or drugs or gambling or internet or, you know, there's so many different things that are addictions, distractions. So I think our listeners are really going to get a lot from your story. Uh, Eureka, I'd like to jump straight into a quote that I read from an interview that you did with TSN because it really stunned me how much truth there was in this statement. And I think it's true for life, also for sports and for business. What you said is we sabotage our mind. I'd say when I win a hundred races, I'll be happy. And when I win a thousand races, then I'll be happy. When I make a million dollars, I'll definitely be happy. I kept making the money that I wanted to make. I kept winning the races that I wanted to win. Being the champion I wanted to be, but the hole kept getting bigger. Then you realize, oh my God, I'm sabotaging myself. Can you talk about setting those big goals? And you know, once you reach them, all the times that you might have sabotaged yourself and, and the insights around that? Um, I went years like that, you know, um, sabotaging myself with this kind of uh, trying to be happy. And uh, because I didn't have a good understand uh, where um, uh, this, all this anxiety was coming from. Um, like I said, I did a, a very, very... Um, a deep work on myself um, because uh, I, I was looking for, uh, uh, I have a, a little bit peace in my life, you know, and, and I was sabotaging myself that if I win this much money or I have that, I'll be happy, I'll, I'll have that peace and, and then gain confidence on myself. And, um, and, but that was never happening you know, with that until I get more awareness about my own self and there where I got the peace and I did a lot of work in connect with nature um, because it's any job, not only uh, as a professional jockey, but as a salesperson, okay, for you to be on your very best, the more peaceful you are with yourself, okay, and you are staying the present moment, the more thing is going to happen to you. Why is that? Because your instinct is going to start working. You know, you start, uh, um, instead of overthinking thing, you just, uh, you get on the flow. You know, you say what you say, you do what you have to do. And, uh, and, uh, and I work as, uh, with the horse is the same thing. The, the more I start work on myself, and then I start to have, uh, overcome all this um, sabotage and, and, and being balanced, 
oh, my horse start flying for me. Like in the race, when I was racing, man, uh, it's like when sometime I finish the race, wow, I did that. You know, it's like I not even move my body too much. Was I was thinking, the horse was thinking together with me. We are so deep connected. Wow. And that came with a lot of work. You know, came a lot of work, uh, discipline, very important. And this happened with uh, saying any job that you want to do. I work with athletes, I work with executives, and it's the same thing. The more peaceful you are inside of self, the more balanced you are, the more thing is going to happen. I think that's that's amazing. So much came up for me when when you were talking. Peace is not necessarily a goal that we would set for ourselves, but being present, being in the moment. I think when you're setting goals, sometimes you can be so future focused that you miss that present moment. And, and I love, you know, the parallel here, I think is salespeople, we, we set a target of a million dollars, then we reach it, then we want $2 million territory, then a $5 million territory. And that growth is great but not at the expense of your own happiness, your own peace. peace. So exactly. I love that point. Thank you. And, and what is make is not that the million, like you, you have a goal for a million dollars. It's nice to chase that. It's nothing wrong with that. Even yeah. a 10 million, right? It's nothing wrong, but it's the journey. It's every day, every day. Uh, do I want to uh, gain all this money uh, happy? or being miserable. What do I want in my life? You know, I want to make the money, but in the same time, I want to be happy. You know, in the same time, I want to enjoy what I'm doing. No use, you make as much money you make uh, if you're not enjoy what you are doing because you're going to get sick anyway. Probably you're going to spend more than that money in in medicine and, and, uh, and probably you're going to even take medicine for anxiety, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but it's, 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 it's the joy, it's the every day, every day that what you are doing, you enjoy, you're in the present moment. And well, that I, was, that was, that is the key. Well, it brings up an interesting question, Eureka. I, I'm, you, you've had a long career, right? It wasn't that you had short success and you were top of the top of the hill and then it was a long career of nothing. You were very successful for a long period of time, but but there must be times in that career where it was really tough to to pick up and con and continue on and really stay engaged. Like what in, in sales, right? You're in a career for 20, 30 years. You get a little complacent. You get a little too comfortable. Like how, where where was that in your career, and and how did you? continue to be a high performer the knife i don't know if you heard that before but sometimes the knife cut both sides okay when you you when you're doing not very good or not good at all you know you get dismotivated you just try and you you find trying to find excuse to get out okay it's very hard to go back in the track and start taking action and do what you have to do to to, um, for you to be successful. And also the knife can cut another side too, is when you're very successful, you start, like you said, you start doing for quite a long time and you, you almost in your head, you, you think, oh, I know what I have to do. And that is a very dangerous point because there where you start getting overconfidence and distracted. What brought you to be successful is what uh, you did in the past, that working hard, being, there uh, is no way you, uh, for, you not, for you to be successful, two things is very important, is being honest and you have to keep doing your best all the time, you know, and consistency. That's what make a person successful, being consistent, 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 and then you get to a certain point, yes, we, um, we tend to get dismotivated, you know, distracted, because sometimes we think it's going to be easy or uh, 
but it's not. And it, it, you can go downhill very, very fast. Hmm. And and the more you go up, is 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 the more difficult for you to for you to stay there. I know this because I was seven years champion, and every year that I got there, every year got more difficult for me to stay because in my competition I got to the point. Uh, that I was not competing with, we never compete with nobody anyway. We compete with our own self. Right. And that was my, every day I want to be, uh, I have the mindset that I want to be better than I was yesterday. And tomorrow I want to be better than today. I keep focus on that, you know, and, and don't get this, uh, distract, um, like, focusing something that I have no control, trying to focus what I can control, because I'm telling you, the more you go up, um, it is more people is going to come with the knife on you. Okay. And it's very normal. No think it's like you, um, is anywhere that any job you do and people always going, Oh, you're doing good. No, people want to take you down, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it brings it, yeah, brings up another question, I guess, too, right? I, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in horse racing. I might have the right size to be a jockey. I'm small in stature, so I might be good. What's your weight? <laughs> uh, I won't go there. So okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hola, guys. Are you trying to recruit me? No. Yeah. But, but, um, it's, it's interesting. You talked about being, uh, peaceful with yourself, right? Being a, a little bit more internal to, and, and that really, uh, I guess, propelled you and propelled your, your horse. You, you were a little more successful when you were at peace. Mm -hmm. But you talked about distractions. You talked about people trying to take you down. You you you're riding a horse, which obviously has its mind of its own sometimes. So so, how did you manage to keep that mindset, keep the focus through all of those distractions? Okay, very good question. Okay, um, the answer for you to stay focused. Um, Every high performance, uh, then you know that he's a coach. You have to have a routine. Okay. Okay. You have to have a routine that every day you do the same thing and don't stay on your routine. You can change by the year. I changed very little what I was doing. For example, I have a routine in the morning, what I do in the morning. And then I start my day. When I start riding, I have my routine, you know, I, I do my meditation. I do I do my um, I, I I I do my warm up. After that, I was stretching, and then I was ready to race. I keep doing the same thing, and in my mind was uh, same visualize the same thing, connecting with nature all the time, connect with nature all the time, because if I got out of that very fast, I started. Like thing was not the energy was changing for me, and because I fall so many times, and that you know uh, that I learned that I have to stay on that pattern. And another thing that is very very important that you also you have to have balance. You know, uh, when is in your job, you are uh, you are like an actor in life. You know, you, you, like you go for, like for me as a jockey, I was a jock. I, I was a jock when I get to the racetrack, but when I try I, out of the racetrack, I was a weak. You know, I complete, like to separate that balance is very, very important. Uh, because you have family, like myself, I have wife, I have kids, you know, trying to, to be in balance. That balance is also very, very important. Well, I do enjoy the comments around balance, uh, being in one with nature. 
I think those are those are important. You, you mentioned about energy too, and I guess getting the right energy in terms of positive versus negative. Is there is there anything in there that that uh, that you saw that that helped? Hundred um, percent. Uh, even the music. I'm a high performance guy. Like, listen, I work as a high performer. I live. I since I uh, what make me a high performance was I think is my my um, my size. I always been very small kid. Every I still you know that make me very very competitive. Uh, I was not a strong boy. I was not a strong jockey, but I I really believe in the mind. You know, I, I was the most confident, the most fit. You know, I work really hard to have e every edge I could have in the healthy way. And that what what make the difference. You're trying to, you know, get the edge and the, and create positive energy. What doesn't bring you positive energy is you have to cut off. It's no another choice. I can. It was very. Hard. Yeah. Uh, it's like uh, I'm not a politician person, but it's like when Trump was in power, like it was, you know, uh, he did a great job. Not 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 uh, not argue about that, but it was a lot of um, for some reason. I'm 47 years old. As I remember as a human being it was the most negative thing in the air was that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my and I I was doing my very best to just stay away from that. This is, is just one example here. You know, people come talking to me about this. I said, I'm not falling much. You know, trying to not bring in anything that it, bring peace. Talk about good memories, uh, good thing, and create good energy. They say uh, negative thoughts are like Velcro. They, they just <laughs> stick to you. And, and positive thoughts are like Teflon. So you really have to work hard to keep those positive thoughts in your mind. And, and so I totally agree. I love the tips that you're talking about for that high performance lifestyle, especially the routine, the consistency, and that equaling performance. And Eureka, you and I are both mindset guys for, for yeah. coaching. So yeah. totally on the same and wavelength. It, and and you, as you know, Daniel, our mind is a specialist to create horror movies. Okay, it's a way the, uh, we protect ourselves fears. Okay, it's true. Our mind is love to create drama and um, and and horror movies. Okay, and we need to be aware of that. And every time you can, like myself, I catch myself thinking about something that is not positive. I move. I move where I want to be thinking about, not about the, I'm not talking about the expectation, like, or thinking like visualize money or visualize uh, a happy life or the, no, not, nothing like that. For me, what bring peace for me, what bring really bring peace for me is simplicity. Uh, what is simplicity for me is be in nature. Hey listeners, we are going to pause the episode here. So there's going to be a part two of this episode. We had so much fun talking to Eureka, and he is going to tell us some stories in part two. He's going to tell us more about his racing career and all the different ways that he's become a super high performer in horse racing. But we did want to separate this. So thanks for listening. And an insight that's come up in between episodes I wanted to share with you. We've had three Canadian champions on in three completely different areas. One as a marksman, uh, second as a female boxer, and third as a horse racing champion. And I wanted to point out that each of them has talked about focus, about staying in the present moment, about being grounded. So I wanna end this episode just by asking you what you've got in your life that is gonna keep you grounded, that is gonna keep you in the present moment as we strive to grow, as we strive to get to our goals and achieve, what will bring you back to that present moment where you've got that little bit of grounding 
that little bit of joy, that little bit of being present, whether it's your family, whether it's a, an exercise by yourself, really want to encourage everybody to think about what that is. Thanks for tuning in. Again, please like, share, and follow. This podcast is growing faster than we ever thought possible, so we appreciate you. And if you've got somebody else in your network that you can send this to, we would be internally grateful. So thanks so much. Keep tuning in. And part two with Eureka Rosa da Silva will be coming shortly. Have a great week.